1965 Lincoln Continental by AMT Earl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders. Are you ready for a presidential treat today? Well, we are going to be looking at the 1965 Lincoln Continental, a really cool model kit. Usually they go this way on my shoulder, but the artwork is up and down like an apartment building for the president. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to be looking at this great kit. So let's begin by, I got all wrapped up in the presidential glory, I guess. Let's like, subscribe, and share this great video with all our friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it. Let's get this up to a presidential 1,000 likes. We might as well go big, right? And now, let's go down to our Lincoln showroom and open up the lid on this great American classic. And now we flash the clock all the way back to 1965 as we unbox this amazing AMT 1965 Lincoln Continental. Now you notice one thing interesting about this box. The box art is actually going vertical instead of horizontal. I believe that's the correct orientation going on here. <laughs> so anyway, we have the three very cool art panels here. Now I'm going to change the camera back to our conventional view after we look at this. So up top here we have the new custom station wagon version which was included in this kit at some point. This of course being reproduction of the original box art. Uh, so they've added in this little roof here and a wagon top. And of course we have the stock convertible which would be like the presidential cars and I'll just get into a little bit of history on this car in a minute here and there's our custom convertible which would be influenced by the likes of George Barris, Gene Winfield and a bunch of the other guys that were working for AMT at the time of this kit's release. So getting into a little bit of the history of the 65 Lincoln, the uh, as Ford Motor Company entered into the 1960s the original 1960 Lincoln was based off the 58-59 style of Lincoln. And new for 1961 was this body style here that you see on the red car. Uh, it was a more chiseled, well-designed looking car. It still carried over the 430 cubic inch Lincoln Continental engine, but it was a lot more popular as a car with that nice design to it. Uh, the 63s had more of like a, uh, how do you describe it? A razor, electric razor, electric shaver type of front end with a nice rounded grill. Whereas they started to get a little more straight in about 1962, 63 era. Um, and this car actually went up to 1967 when it, the body style got changed up following year 1968 to make it a little more modern. So now, let me see, I've got this thing vertical, so I suppose this would be the right way to put, position the box here, <laughs> since we're going up and down. A little departure from normal. So here we have a dash-mounted telephone as a custom feature. The custom exhausts, which are really cool on there. And then we have these simulated wire wheels with a knockoff bit. And of course licensed by Ford Motor Company from AMT at the time. We're just going to put this around this way now. And I'll move this the opposite way. Professionally designed parts including a luggage rack. Uh, what do we got here? Aluminum... Pardon me. Air cleaner. Aluminum air cleaner. It's hard to see it from where I'm positioned here. The tire housing for your Lincoln Continental, which would be a Continental kit. And then we have custom bumpers. <laughs> Couldn't read that. There's a fold right across there. Okay, custom bumpers. And finally, 
we have this very cool custom tail light the tall lights with the grills going around the outsides so now let's tilt our camera into the right position and open up the lid of this model kit all right so now we have the camera tilted around the right way and here's our 1965 amt lincoln that will move the box off the top of the box off the rest of it and here's our great instructions this of course was a model kit that came out uh re re came out again one more time under rc2 this is prior to the current round two which of course amt is a part of so we've got this nice artist illustration of the wagon version of the kit it is a three-in-one customizing kit and I do believe these instructions are a reproduction of the original ones, which would have been found way back when in the 65 Lincoln Continental kit. So I'm going to move the instructions down here and we will look at them first. Of course, we can fold these guys out. Again, it's four panels, much like our 65 Chevelle wagon was last time around except it's not a double fold instruction sheet by any means and that's good so let's start here with the basic assemblies and i will just zoom in to our instruction sheet how are you guys enjoying this overhead camera mount that i created i got the idea from that actually from youtube videos so it does give a nicer picture of our instructions and lays everything down nice and flat all right, let's get into this. So here we have our 430 cubic inch Lincoln presidential engine for Lincoln Continental. Okay, there's our air cleaner right there and our big monstrous four barrel carburetor going on to this intake manifold. We got our distributor going in there. Of course, you can port and polish all these, which would be great. <laughs> anyway massive horsepower out of this thing unported and unpolished but hey dream big right okay they are only showing the one side of the cylinder head and valve covers but as we all know you can't have one without the other so this is actually do it twice once on per side right there's your exhaust manifolds your two engine blocks going together and there is the oil pan uh, now, unlike the wagon, the Chevelle wagon we reviewed last time around, you can see that the starter motor and everything is molded onto one side of the engine block as a solid piece. The oil pan goes beside it. It isn't like split the way that starter motor was on the uh, Chevelle wagon. So anyway, enough about the Chevelle wagon. We're talking about the Lincoln. <laughs> okay, so we got the fan belt assembly going here and there should be a generator popping out the side there or an alternator uh, anyway there isn't here's our expansion tank for the radiator it's overflow and our stock fan and now you get into the optional engine on this side you know my dad had a bunch of these kits not the Lincoln but he had the uh, Buick Wildcat and he built stock out of the box out of the factory and there's always this, these cool air cleaners this was the era of these big cool aluminum air cleaner custom bits and there was always that part kicking around in the parts box <laughs> so I remember that so here's the Lincoln version of a really cool aluminum air cleaner which is a custom deal going over top of our carburetors which are actually in this instruction sheet, it looks like they're staggered like the way the um, uh, the Plymouths had theirs staggered. So we'll have to look, of course, at our plastic parts later here. So there's our distributor, the expansion tank again. This one is using a six-bladed fan for extra cooling as opposed to the four-bladed fan from the stock version. The oil pan should be the same oil pan. We'll have a look engine block course is the same so now we got our aluminum valve covers going up here and our cylinder heads and these special aluminum exhaust manifolds now this one you can port and polish get some massive awesome uh, air fuel mixture flow into those cylinder heads 
Okay, anyway, here we go. So, these are really, actually, bizarre looking wheels. They're not really wires, but they're sort of... How would you describe it? Sectional component uh, type wheels? Okay, anyway. So there's our, our knockoff. Goes into this wheel outer, which is like a hub, with these little tiny points sticking in them. Going onto our wheel back, which has this nice fluted cone with a hole in it. And then going into possibly the same old Firestone tires that are included in 1932 Fords. But of course they would be your bias tires or bias belted, possibly. I had bias belted on my uh, 72 Cutlass. <laughs> Those type of tires, if you dropped your, uh, your car into gear fast enough, you could actually put on a smoke show with them. Anyway, uh, four wheel covers, stock wheel covers going in here, and our stock wheel backs with the metal axle and these locator holes. You can set them up at the bottom hole for stock and of course at the top hole for a lowered custom. And of course we've got our battery here going into our one-piece pan chassis. Now this kit is a peg and post type of kit which is a good indication that it came out in the early 60s, early to mid 60s from AMT, the original AMT, and uh, we'll see that in the instructions coming up here in a minute. Now, peg and pole, peg and post, <laughs> chassis. Okay, here's our interior. Again, another 1960s giveaway that this is a repop of an old, old kit, is the interior bucket, or the interior tub. Bucket or tub, you know, take your pick. <laughs> okay. So there's the rear seat molded in, the upholstery patterns molded to the side, the dashboard going into this little kind of relief in here. This looks like, again, an automatic. We will check it out when we look at our parts. Our steering wheel going into the hole there. And of course, here we have our seats. These are a bucket seat arrangement with a center console, so it's not a bench. We have an optional tape recorder. Hey, that was not on the side of the box. And we have two telephones, location optional. Ooh, two telephones for the uh, deluxe presidential thing so that our president can talk to the chauffeur in the front. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's interesting, these things, because now we're living in a world of cell phones and uh, all this custom vintage telephone stuff, which was really cool at the time, is sort of, you know, kind of redundant, but it has brought, you know, the idea of a telephone in your car from the past into our future now. So anyway, of course, now we have hands-free because you can't drive holding a telephone. You get ticketed for that and cause accidents. So here's, anyway, there's our body there in this uh, number four, the stock body. And you can see there's our peg and post again. Not really on the front. The hood is there and it hinges. The hinge points are at the front of the car instead of at toward the back, like our Chevelle wagon of a couple weeks ago was. The firewall drops in and our assembled interior, as well as we have our radiator wall with our radiator molded in place. So now at the bottom of the instruction sheet, we get into the optional wagon and they give you a wagon interior that you glue to the back of the stock interior. Uh, there's a little piece here it's describing how to cut this for your station wagon and then on the body you're going to take your knife and cut along the back here and get rid of our peg and post thing push that out this tub will take its place and then we have our extended windows here uh, or yes for our station wagon top and of course the firewall and the hood and the rad support and all that go in there. Now we just need to turn this over. And here is our final assemblies for stock. You get the nice Lincoln hood ornament, which <laughs> looks actually like a uh, 
viewfinder for sitting on a machine gun. But anyway, <laughs> okay, and our stock bumper, which is a one-piece component with the headlights molded in. So these, of course, are your parking lamps and turn signal bits. Uh, but here, in the past, I've used a mixture of Tamiya Clear with a little tiny drop of, Kami of Tamiya Clear Transparent Blue, just to give it a little bit of a blue tone into the recesses here, which kind of gave a neat little light effect. There's our stock rear bumper, and you do get the red taillights, as well as a license plate, which pop into there and into the back. And of course, here's our stuff saying that it's officially licensed by Ford. Okay, so now we get into the custom version. And again, I'm not sure who has designed the grills. If you know, please leave a comment in the comment section below, because AMT had a lot of people working behind them, and you can actually, if you have the time, you can Google up each of the cars. Just type in something like George Barris, Lincoln Continental, and uh, you know a Lincoln will pop up that was designed by Barris or Gene Winfield or whoever, right? And it may show this grill sitting in there. So if you can actually do that for me, that would be great. Write in the comments below, see if you can track this up. I did it for the 53 Ford. It was quite, it's actually a really cool uh, journey on discovering who made what in these AMT kits. And uh, I encourage you guys to take that journey and let me know how it goes. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you actually have... What's going on here? You've got two backup lights and you also have custom rear nerfs that you could put in there. So you have an uh, option of where your rear backup lights are going, rear tail lights. So we have a custom roll pan going on here. There's the Continental tire housing off the back. A custom rear bumper going in there. Custom tail lights popping in your back here. There's a license housing and your license plate down below. This all glues to your back hand. There's your machine gun hood ornament type of thing. A sight, a sight for your machine gun. There's your two parking lights go in here. Uh, onto your custom grill right down there and then you have an optional grill which can be put in here as well as these headlights which are going in there all of this mounts of course onto your chassis it's very plain and simple and finally we get into the station wagon options and if you guys are big fans of wagons well, this is a one big huge whopping wagon for you fans out there and that's meant as a joke. Okay, so here's your stock rear bumper and your stock tail lights going in, license plate. And now they, they've got a luggage rack that you glue onto the roof of your wagon. They're showing it going up close to the front here. Um, oh, because I do believe the glass is right there. We'll take a look at that in a minute with our parts. And of course, our stock front bumper. So you're basically hiding the fact that this is a stock car that's now a wagon. <laughs> okay, anyway, and that concludes our look at the instructions. So now let's take all our plastic bits out of the box and inspect them for quality. And here we have our Lincoln Continental body, which of course I'm holding this way because if I let go, it'll go to do that. Okay, now anyway, here's our Lincoln Continental body. As you can see, it is quite nice. Very slab sided, much like the real car of the era. You can see the four doors with the rear suicide style door going in there. Just bring this up a little bit. Here's the door handles. And we have the little vents under, just behind the hood here with our windshield wipers. Now, um, the car manufacturers started to get rid of these by the late 60s, early 70s. The vents were still there, and the wipers, of course, were still there, but they made the hoods cover up over top of this. But this is still of the era where all this was very visible. Uh, let's see now. Can you see that? There we go. Can you see that? Yes, we can! Okay, <laughs> but seriously. Uh, 
AMT has molded this uh, nice roll bar in here for uh, your drag racer. Guy. No, no. What it is, it's just a, a piece here to, because there's no roof support in the mold, it's just to make sure that these don't get bent and sink in. So you want to saw this off just behind the sun visors and across on the body here. <laughs> You guys were worried when I said roll bar, you worked in. <laughs> okay, anyway. You can see the nice uh, Lincoln Continental script molded in here. And of course on the back trunk lid we have the Lincoln emblem. And the lock for the trunk lid. There's our peg and post in there. Now underneath, there is a little bit of a recessed area in here. Let's see, there we go. Can you see it? Yes we can where you would be dragging your knife out for putting on the the station wagon roof which is right here you can see the hole for the glass so that would go there and with the cutout this would be out of the way the hood fit on here should be very nice and tight to the body with little to no gaps except for how I'm doing it here Kind of funny way. All right, my batteries died, but I had backups. So I don't know if I got cut off mid-sentence, but anyway, I don't know if it matters. All right, so since I showed the roof component, I thought I would show the uh, body bits and whatnot that are on these parts trees. So here we have our custom rolled pan and these slots for the red rear tail lights. There's our distributor, it looks like. License plate saying 1965, our stock wheels with the extended components there for the rear axles, which are metal rods. This, of course, would be our brake drums in here. One, two, three, four. My 72 Cutlass had four wheel brake drums. Uh, I have a Cutlass Supreme somewhere else, not in my backyard, <laughs> that has discs in the front. But anyway, um, there's our our uh, convertible, or sorry, our station wagon roof. Uh, note the big custom glass component back here. That I don't think would be factory. Factory roof would probably go right to the end and just have a little window in there. But uh, I don't know. Was there a factory wagon like this for Lincoln? Let me know in the comments below. I don't have a picture of one in my book. <laughs> Okay, anyway. All right. Um, now, one thing that wasn't in the instructions are these nice fender skirts that are part of the kit. So you could also glue those onto your Continental. There's our radiator support wall and our stock hood here. All this stuff is very smooth, as the Lincoln was quite a smooth slab-sided vehicle. Now if you turn it over, you will note four little mold marks into the corners here. We've got the nice fireproof matting underneath our hood and underneath this brace. And then we've got some mold marks here on the back of our support, which are very easy to file off or take your sandpaper block and go across just to get rid of those to make all parts fit well underneath. And let's see, our roof has a couple of mold marks in there and around where the glass goes in and some here on the back panel but again number 16 hobby blade is your friend you can scrape that off no problems so let's take a look at some of our other components and here we have our lincoln continental chassis here and i discovered a discrepancy between the instruction sheet and what's really going on with the plastic i'll show it to you in a second here now you'll notice there's big opening here on the frame. This would be for your screws to go in in your peg and post model. Now this could have been a promotional model back in the day that this was based off of. So this underpan was saved from a promotional kit. There is evidence here of AMT plugging over the, the holes that would be there for the screws on this back end. Uh, all right, so your lower suspension components here are visible. You've got molded in exhaust pipes that disappear to go up underneath the rear axle and they pop out along the outside of the chassis. Now here's the discrepancy here. So 
I have the instructions over here and you'll notice, remember I said there's two holes, usually one is for the stock ride height and the other is to lower the car, although the way this shows you'd be pushing your tires right up through your fender skirt, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, take a look here, there's only one hole <laughs> and one hole there, so the discrepancy in the instructions of course. So flipping this over onto the part you'll never see, except for in the engine bay. You got, of course, some engine wiring going in here, just lightly molded in. You can see right in there, as well as some of the components like the windshield wiper bottle, sort of lightly molded into the fender apron. Uh, now there's the little posts there for the back of the peg and post bit and blanked off in the front here. So for those of you guys who remember, was there a promotional model kit which would have been given away at the car dealership as had been brought out in a previous comment? Um, the reason why I said in the past that some of the promos were sold at the dealership is because in Canada, um, in more recent years, because I was trying to get one for my Toyota. I've got a Toyota, at the time I had a, uh, a Yaris, and I wanted the promotional model for the Yaris, because I have a few GM promotional models. So at the Toyota dealership, you had to buy it. <laughs> okay, and it wasn't a promotional model, it was a die cast of a Yaris, which wasn't even my year. <laughs> All right, so that's why I said before in one of the earlier videos that you had to buy the promos because I, I had to buy a promo, so I assumed that everybody had to. But some somebody informed me that the dealerships gave them away, so it may have been a regional thing. I'm not sure. So for you guys that were kids at the time, of some of these early promos, let me know in the comment section if your parents had to buy one or if it was given away because it may vary to your region. So let's let's find out. Anyway, let me know. Okay, so that's your chassis. Let's check out some of the other bits. All right, here we have two parts trees and a random part. <laughs> But these make up all the interior components as well as we have our um, valve covers and cylinder heads going on here. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll start over here. This is our interior tub. You notice there's a little bit of overhang here. That's to help with the location of our... Um, optional bucket back end here for the station wagon. I'm starting to slip. Okay, uh, we have a nice front seat here molded in two pieces so you can actually put your chrome bare metal foil around the edges here, provided that's how Lincoln had it. Check out your research material. But they have that nice seat back with these inserts here too. Usually there was an ashtray off the back of seats like this. But look at how that nicely drops into place. Got nice detail here on the tuck and roll, as well as your headrests and whatnot. Centered con console column here. For neat things. Okay, let's just pop those out. Here's the two telephones. And of course one would be for the front hanging off the dashboard and the other would be in the back hanging off the front seat somewhere, and they actually have two different types of notches for mounting these things where they would end up being. So you can see one's L-shape and one is sort of C-shape in here. There's our cylinder heads and the valve covers. It would look nice with a Lincoln logo across the top. I'm not sure if the engine actually had that or if these would just have been painted gold or something like that. Anyway. Um, nice carpeted texture detail in here on this bucket. Of course, there's your rear fender aprons. I'll just move this out of the way for a minute. And here 
it's an automatic you have of course your brake pedal and your gas pedal there's a little thingy there probably for the, where the back of the seat goes the little posts here for your front seat there is some mold marks in here which of course number 16 hobby blade except the bad part about that is when you scrape these down you also scrape off your texture but if you have a flocking kit you could paint in here and then drop the flock on there look nice your interior door panels and of course tuck and roll on the seat again not too bad there isn't any window winders or whatnot so it's possible this has power windows although it's not really too well reflected in any of the door panels okay and now here's our dashboard and again we've got the nice detail this has got the oops pardon me the end-to-end -end speedometer which would of course have a needle that goes all the way across you got your AM radio in there your glove box down below the ashtray a um, bunch of the controls for different things in your car and I do believe that is pretty much it so let's take a look at some of the next components and here's some engine components as well as some of the other little goodies in this little baggie here is the Lincoln steering wheel um, now this would be in this bag because it broke off the parts tree in the factory and somebody picked it up off the ground and went oh this should be in a in the kit and threw it in the bag so just move that back into the box so I don't lose it okay so now here we have our engine uh, components as well as our reel-to-reel -reel tape deck oh, moving the parts tree with my pointer and now we do have a roll bar in here for the convertible this is the actual roll bar <laughs> interesting how it comes square up like that it's not even rounded at the corners but you know it's all style of course right style of roll bar so here we have our firewall with the power brake booster molded in place and different bits and pieces <laughs> please don't tell me that's the heater motor <laughs> anyway no okay let's move on um uh, what am i talking about here's our right and left hand sides of our engine block and this does have the automatic uh bit in here hanging off our pardon me off our bell housing for our transmission You can tell because it only has one linkage there on our linkage points. Here, let's uh, put this up to the camera. See, unlike with the Chevelle, when I said it was a standard, it had the two sitting up there for your linkages. Okay, so this is the proper way. Ah, I see where our alternator is. It's actually molded onto the fan belt and the pulleys. There's our big old air cleaner again, my favorite part of the engines, the stock engines. And of course our intake manifold with the single four barrel carburetor. Uh, let me know which carburetors were used in Fords, write it in the comments down below. In the Lincoln, was it a Holly or a Rochester or a Carter? Let me know. I do believe Carter though is a GM thing. Um, anyway there's our overflow tank and our nice t battery here there's the four blade fan and of course our exhaust manifolds and a license plate 1966 on there uh, and that basically concludes that bit mold marks of course in your dashboard and under your air cleaner you'll you could take the whole air cleaner on a sanding block and sand it like that, you know. Get rid of that, make it nice and flat. And you got some on the back of your fan here. So, heads up guys, there's where, of course, your mold marks are. So let's see some more of these parts. There's the oil pan. It was a stray in the kit, fell off. It was in the bottom of the box. It's got a little divot in there for your axle to go through, a single pin, and a lot of flash. So... If you find your little renegade oil pan, make sure to get rid of your seam lines. Now we get into my favorite bits of all of these, and that is the chrome tree. 
Hooray! I love it. Um, although, if you notice here, you see a funny little thing going on here. This actually has a great big warp in it. So hopefully that's not going to affect the, uh, the alignment of my bumper or anything. Hmm. Well, I'll have to see when I build this thing. Probably in 2029 when I finish doing all my model kit reviews. Yes, I have a lot of model cars. I will confess. Okay, here's the stock bumper. Of course, it's 1965 molded in the bumper there in the license plate. Yep. It looks like a 6. <laughs> but it's really a 5. Okay. Uh, now, this doesn't have any of the r little loops like the uh, Chevelle had for the peg and post, so this will have to be... You have to scrape the plating off there, the contact surfaces, before you glue it into your body. Okay, we've got the Lincoln Continental hubcaps here, the stock ones, the little um, gun sight in the center. There's the gun sight for the hood. And our rear bumper with our backup lights molded down below. And of course you would be putting in your your uh, turn signal lamps into the tops there. And then we just slide this over. I'll just put it down again. You can see the custom grill components. This is the Lincoln grill that, that would go in the center here. It's the optional. I don't know if you can actually put this into there. But if you could, it would kind of end up looking like... Whoa! <laughs> My backdrop fell down. Uh, if you put this into here, it would kind of look like more of a... sort of the 70s Lincoln. Early 70s Lincoln. But anyway, this is intended to go into here. Which, of course, these here are your for your longer tail lamps. There's the funny sort of two-piece spoky wheels that are going on. You can see sort of it's, it's a bizarre way to do that. <laughs> okay, there's your Continental uh, back piece. It's chromed and some chrome trim there. And that was for your license plate to go into the back. And this, of course, being the front grille. Uh, you could put in some black wash into there and there just to make this pop up a bit better and a little bit of like I said before, like a, just a hint of blue wash in there, clear blue. It would uh, give you some nice, uh, realistic looking headlights. So let's take a look at our other chrome tree. All right, here we get to the chrome custom bits. And I was correct, this is offset like the Chrysler wedge engine intake manifold, which would be like your 413s. <laughs> okay, see? One carburetor there and one offset over there, just like the wedge. The wedge! All right, what's the rest of this stuff? I do believe that was the custom grill insert. And there's your valve covers, the chrome ones, as well as your four little knockoffs, which go into these, which are your wheels. That funny kind of spoke thing going on. There's the front lights. Uh, the nerfs for that bumper. There's your luggage rack going in there and of course some air cleaners here for your four barrel chrome carburetors and your aluminum exhaust manifolds. Am I right there? I hope so. And your six bladed chrome fan. It's very cool components. Now we get into the glass. So here's something that's definitely not a pain in the glass is our plastic glass. <laughs> That's probably the closest I can get to seeing something like that. Anyway, hey, this is kind of cool. This is a clear plastic distributor cap. Have a look at that. I've never seen that before. Very interesting. Clear distributor cap. I guess AMT had to put a distributor cap in there and that was the only place they figured to put one. Bizarre. Uh, I should not paint that. Okay, anyway, there's our glass for the uh, um, station wagon roof. 
And this is like an actual properly fitted glass. It's not like the promo glass that had the bars coming off the end to connect the front and rear windshield together. There's a front windshield anyway. Probably because this is convertible, so you couldn't do that. Uh, there's our front headlights, uh, the ones that go in the custom bumper and whatnot. There's some headlights there as well for, of course, all the custom bits. Here's our final bit of parts for this kit. We have, of course, our Firestone tires. These ones you could paint the white wall inside here uh, or leave them as black walls. These, of course, are bias ply tires. They have the treads that wrap around them and the little pie crust type edges. One side is completely blank. The other side, of course, has our Firestone printed in there. Like I said just a second ago, you can paint white walls in. But these are the same kind of tires that AMT has put in all the kits, basically going back to the 1932 Ford. I don't know if there's these appear in anything earlier than that, because these are actually the first uh, tubeless or sorry, not tubeless, tube tires. Whereas uh, anything earlier, like the 29 Ford and that, they're not solid rubber though, uh, but they're narrow, right? Super narrow for the bigger wheel. So this would be like the first 15 inch style wheel. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, and then here we have our very famous, very friendly, these, these ones have come in mini kits as well, the Goodyear Polyglass GT tires which of course have a more realistic type of tread to them. These wheels of course would be yeah, around that time period, maybe into the early 70s. And then here we have our rear taillights. These ones are the stock ones. Of course I got them upside down there. So some nice detail. And then these are custom inserts and our two metal axles going in there to tie our wheels together side to side and make them roll in that nice chassis. Finally, we have a slightly puzzling decal sheet according to how the instructions are. Puzzling in a way. Because here we have seven or six, seven, eight, nine, and a zero and ASP and AAD. These are uh, drag racing classifications. I'm not actually sure. I've never seen A and SP and AAD. So if you guys know what that is, write it in the comment section down below, of course. Write everything in the comment section down below. It's a good place to write this stuff. Anyway, <laughs> and we've got a single sponsor here, Firestone. And there's our license plates, VW, Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, it's a big Volkswagen. No, anyway, uh, VW1006. Um, Okay, but anyway, here we have this wood grain right here. Now that part isn't so puzzling because it shows it on the side of the box, if you recall. Let me just grab the box lid. Right there. So you would put that onto the slab sides onto your wagon. But if you notice, there's absolutely no template on here. So here's the body. And um, if you lay that down, you would get the wood grain going from behind the fender, front fender, into the back here. But you're left on your own devices as to cutting this thing out. So I would recommend, before you even paint the model, if you want to use your wood grain, get another piece of paper and lay it over top of your body here. And basically make your own template off the side of this thing using your piece of paper and cut your your paper template down until it fits the way you need it to fit and then lay it over top of the decal as carefully as you can because you're only going to get one shot at this and do your template you know on one side then flip the template over and use it on the bottom for your other side and good luck to you guys good good luck on getting that done right because you have one shot. So anyway, there's your decal sheet, and that should conclude our view. And that concludes our look at the AMT 1965 Lincoln Continental. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that amazing video of our 1965 Lincoln Continental. And hey, maybe I'll build the station wagon to go with that Chevelle wagon. <laughs> station wagon for a president. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. And let's get this thing up to 100 likes. And until next time, think big.